All righty. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the 28th STEM lecture series. This event is titled Women Opening Opportunities for Success in the STEM Fields. And today we have with us Dr. Stacy Kuhnhau. She is a native of San Antonio and an associate professor of biology at, here at St. Phillips College. She has earned a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Prairie View A&M University and a master's in science and a PhD in biology. Um, she, both of those degrees were earned at the University of Texas at San Antonio. Um, her doctoral research focused on adult neurogenesis, which occurs in the hippocampus, a brain structure involved with memory consolidation. These studies were exciting because they revealed me mechanisms that caused the survival of new cells, which is important for finding cures for diseases such as Alzheimer's. Her passion for neurobiology developed from personal and professional experiences. Dr. Kuhnhau has experience in industry where she was a manager in the Department of Genetic Testing at Qualtex Laboratories. She also has taught secondary science education. Dr. Kuhnhau takes pride and a strong interest in making memories with her family and friends while living a purposeful life. She has a desire to bring awareness to STEM topics and careers while leading and serving in her community at large. Please welcome Dr. Stacy Kuhnhau. Thank you for having me. Of course. Now we do have some questions that we would like to ask. But as students are viewing this presentation, if they come up with any questions of their own, um, we invite them to ask those questions in a form, which will have access to that uh, QR code and a URL at the end of the presentation. Okay, so we'll go ahead and begin with our, our first uh, main question. So as you look back at your life, what was your most positive learning experience and why? That's an interesting question. Um, I think the most positive learning experience I've had is learning, um, like at least in my my studies or my during my undergraduate and graduate years, is learning the most effective way to study. Surprisingly, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot, a lot of my students have the same question. Um, but what I found is that it was through my way, right? It wasn't my friend's way. Uh, not my study group's way, you know, it was, it was something that I had to actually develop over the years. And, and so what I found, it was that it was an ever evolving process. Uh, the way I studied in undergrad was not the same way that I studied as a graduate student. So I learned that it was very much, that I, during that process, that I was a, a visual learner and what that mm -hmm. meant to me. Mm -hmm. So I had to find ways to actually bring the, the pages of my textbook to life. And um, in doing so, I was called everything from a nerd to this, that, the other, from outside members of, of my uh, friends and family, but I had to do what I needed to do. Um, so in doing those tricks, uh, one of the biggest things that I found was I ran over to Walmart and I picked up one of those big whiteboards, right? And whole markers, you know, a whole bunch of colored markers there to help me. And so what I did was I talked myself through complex processes. And um, as I read through the material, and that would actually help me grasp the concepts. And then I would look over at my whiteboard and see all the colors and figures, and that would help me recall on assessment days or on days that I just really needed to grasp concepts and put concepts together. So I found that the learning process there, um, it was just something that was trial and error. And also um, I learned that um, how, how I studied, again, it could change and it, and it progressed as I went through the undergraduate and graduate degree. And so learning um, this was actually a positive thing for me and it mm -hmm. helps my overall academic success. That's very good. That I'm glad you brought that up because I know that that is one of the biggest challenges of being a student is finding out how to be your best student. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And then, and, you know, and, and teaching others, you might, you might find a way to kind of uh, provide that, to, and it may be somebody else's way, and if it's not, that's great, because it's their journey, right? Mm -hmm. but, yeah. I agree, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our second um, question. So this one is, what made you decide to major in biology? 
this is kind of a um, complex, long story for me in a way, <laughs> but very kind of straightforward is if I had to think about it and, and, and you know, and just a summary, right? But growing up, I was always surrounded by like the medical field. My father, he was a doctor, he was a psychiatrist, and my mom was a medical technologist. So there were magazines, there were books, and all these things around the house uh, with STEM topics. So what I found was, I didn't know I would do this, but I would sit down sometimes as a child and I would pick through those magazines and I'd pick them up and I'd read them. And then I started wondering, oddly, how I could contribute to the field. So I think that just kind of grew um, throughout my childhood. And so um, what I find interesting is that my decision uh, to major in STEM, it started off for one reason and then it slowly transitioned into another reason. Uh, so during my undergraduate years, it was my wholehearted intention to, again, go to medical school. I, I wanted to be a physician at any cost. You know, I, when I graduated undergrad, I took a year off to study for the MCAT, which is an, the exam you have to take for entrance to medical school. Mm -hmm. um, while studying <clears throat> for that, I decided, well, you know what, I, I might as well earn some money while doing so. So I uh, started teaching uh, high school, in fact. So while I was teaching, I started to think about ways I could get my high school students to not only kind of memorize biological concepts that were pretty hard, but also to develop, develop the, the ability to convert them into long-term memory so they could use that information later on. Mm -hmm. So as I was kind of looking at ways to help them learn about this, um, I, I came across a topic that I never actually looked at before and it was involving the human brain. I found myself kind of getting engrossed in the in the topic of learning and memory. So at the same time I was researching this, my grandmother started showing signs of dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, yeah, so in, in addition to thinking about ways to kind of learn and all that, when I'm thinking about these brain processes, a whole nother topic entered my brain that was related to the field. Um, so, um, I also kind of had the idea that it was it was uh, my duty then to kind of find not only the answer for my students, but also the answer to my grandmother who was suffering from this memory deficit. So <laughs> while I was teaching, I could kind of see my wheels spinning and like the transitioning happening from like medical school to something that I had never, ever, ever thought about really. So at first it was scary, but I said, let's dive into this because it's something I really care about. Right. So I began to kind of research at that point, research uh, programs that focused on learning and memory and uh, found that in San Antonio, lo and behold, where I was from, there was a neurobiology program that focused on um, the exact topic I was looking about. And that was at UTSA. And so at that point, I started um, to become less interested in medicine, like I was said before, and more interested in teaching and research. So I applied to the program. Um, at UTSA and I was admitted. I took graduate classes that focused on neurobiology topics and that led to me receiving my master's in biology. And what I found then was that I fell in love with the brain, with research related to it. And, and, and then I applied to the PhD program because I said, I gotta find out my answers, right? I, I have to look into this research that's so interesting. So, um, I think, you know, I almost became like, I felt like I felt became a scholar because I was so uh, interested in it. So my, re re my research, as you mentioned before, um, Jessica, is devoted to something called neurogenesis. And so most people say, well, what is that, right? And so a lot of times people ask, well, say, they think, oh, all the brain cells, you're, you're born with all the brain cells that you'll have. But really, that's not true. There are two areas in the brain where we regenerate new brain cells. So to me, that was like, wow, does that mean that there could be a possibility of, of um, new things happening if new neurons are coming along? So um, basically what that is, neuro, the word neurogenesis means that uh, there's growth and development of nervous cells and tissue, which to me in my mind equals potential for, for um, curing something like Alzheimer's, which is a degenerative disease. Mm -hmm. So it was my hope at the time um, with my research to find a way to provide strong evidence um, that new networks of cells would allow people like my grandmother 
uh, with dementia to create new memories while reserving the long-term ones. And I was able to find great findings while I was in grad school, um, which suggested that those new neurons that are born today in your brain have the ability to develop and survive when they are stimulated and what receptors are actually responsible for that survival. Mm -hmm. And so these findings to me, um, they were very exciting um, because it gave a glimpse of hope uh, that we could actually create possibly the perfect medication therapy for people that with Alzheimer's or dementia. Mm -hmm. And so I know we have a long track ahead of us, but that's maybe one answer, right? That so with some of the work that I've done. Um, but during my doctoral work, unfortunately, my mother uh, was also diagnosed with, with Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and my work became even more significant. Mm -hmm. And um, so in the past, I've made it a point to actually focus on uh, the field of research that's that's really important to me. So I think that's really important in, in one's path in STEM. Uh, but in recent years, I found my way back to another love, which was my and passion, which was teaching, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I toggle between the two, right? But so as you can, you can kind of tell from my story, my pathway, I think with STEM, um, it had some unexpected twists and turns, but I've held, um, I've always held a general interest in the area. Gotcha. Very good. Um, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, most times there is some outside influential factor that does definitely steer us one way or versus another. Mm -hmm. so and I feel like it could just drive that. you. It's kind yes. of like a motivating factor. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Okay, I think that might lead us into our next question, which was, what have been your greatest challenges in getting your education and how did you overcome those challenges? I would say that one, that I experienced a lot of challenges and challenges are to be expected. Although I thought it was just gonna be smooth sailing. Like I'm just gonna jump in there and I'm gonna you know, study and I'm gonna get my degree and then I'm gonna have my career. Little did I know little sticks would be put in the way which would <laughs> test that, right? Test, yeah. that, uh, test that along the way. But my biggest challenge I would say was when getting when getting my education was actually figure out how to manage those personal situations that would come up or pop up along the way. Um, one of them occurred while I was in my doctoral program. Um, I, I was in the very last semester um, of my doctoral program and, and uh, about two months away from defending my research in preparation for graduation, when my dad called and said, oh, I have some bad news. He had um, bilateral kidney cancer, and was, so that means that there were tumors found in both of his kidneys, mm -hmm. and that he had to have surgery ASAP. So I remember thinking as a student, and also as his daughter, right, that I was under a lot of stress already, but but how could this be happening? How could actually this be happening right now, right? Mm -hmm. So for a second, I, I really felt discouraged, which is something natural to happen, right? Um, but I was even, um, I was actually even going to postpone everything and run to his aid until I remembered everything that had, I had actually put into the moment that I was in. Everything that I had invested um, was at stake. So I had to stop and I said, okay, what are you going to do? What, what, is, what is your plan? I stopped, I refocused, and I found myself, I carried on with my goal at the at the core of my thoughts. And it was tough, but um, so it's like, okay, well, that's easy to say, but what did you do, right? So I just took it one day at a time, right? One surgery at a time for my dad, because it was two surgeries during that semester. One research topic at a time, one written paper at a time for my doctoral work. And so with, uh, with trust and faith, I was, I was not only able to see my dad cancer free, I was also awarded with my PhD at the end of that sem semester. Um, so um, I would say like my take home point in all this is that it's important uh, to take things slow when these challenges happen, right? Go step by step um, when, when faced with that challenge. And I'd say always kind of keep your goal in mind to, to push you through 
and to light that fire underneath you. Mm -hmm. Very well, very good. Okay, I think we'll move on to number four. <laughs> okay, so next question is, if you could name one person who had the greatest impact on your life, who would that person be and why? Hmm. I mean, this is this is a hard question for me too, but I have so many. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to keep it along the same theme and with mm -hmm. family, right? Mm -hmm. And so the, the 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 core person I could think about would be my father. I mean, I want to say I want to say you said one person, but both mm -hmm. my mother and father. I can't sure, leave her out. Sure. I can't sure. leave her out. You know, uh, mom. Yeah, she passed down characteristics such as the ability to be empathetic yet firm to me, um, mm -hmm. always comforting and nurturing. And so I find myself being that with family and then others and my students. Mm -hmm. um, my dad, on the other hand, taught me how to manage life and how, I would say how to handle the world, right? The world is, is not always the easiest place to, to conquer, right? But just kind of using the tools. Um, I made sure to tell, he made sure to tell me to watch out a lot of times for like people that would give you wooden nickels. And I was like, what does that mean? Until I was faced <laughs> with it during my journey, right? I said, oh, I know what those wooden, wooden nickels mean now, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, he taught me like good work ethic, how to have good work ethic and how to reach goals without ceasing. Uh, so again, I mimic those times of challenges, just keep going, you know? You know what, you're, what the goals are, right? Um, they both had a heart of gold is what I would say, uh, which is something that I model, I try to model every day. Um, I really take pride in trying to be kind to others daily because you never know what people are going through, right? Um, and, and giving giving and offering advice. Um, all of these things, I think, I first encountered with my parents, which had a huge impact in my life, um, which I'm actually very, very grateful. Mm -hmm. They sound amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm very blessed to have them. Of course. Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, we shall move on with our fifth question for now, because as we know, students may ask some more later. And then yes. if so, we'll come back for a part two. Okay, great. Uh, but our last question for now is going to be, what is your best advice for someone pursuing a major in a STEM field? Oh, so... My best advice for someone um, pursuing their STEM, their their career in STEM, I have several. I have several pieces of advice. One is to create a plan um, that leads you to your ultimate goal in life, and which are which are future careers. Um, and after you create that plan, I would say make one action, just one, that initiates the plan, and um, that gets the ball rolling. Because once you get the momentum, it's easier to kind of keep going. So, um, and to get you get you through it. So mm -hmm. one, create a plan, write it down and go after it. Um, secondly, I would say trust and have faith in where your path um, is, where your path is actually being directed. Um, sometimes it's hard to, to to think, okay, do I trust this process? But just do it, right? Um, I keep hearing the phrase these days, um, trust the process, right? Um, well, I have to tell you, I think, I really think that's important, right? And, and sometimes we can get so scared, but just trust the process. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that that's it. And then um, a couple others, maybe uh, embrace, oh, I, I think it was really trust, like embracing your community is one I would say. The community here at St. Phillips um, and other outlets for support. I think this is a, a, a really a vital step in getting the encouragement you need um, to thrust you to the finish, finish line and using whatever resources you have available to you. And, and I would say last but not least, um, as with my case, don't be fearful of change if that happens. I told you that my, my path went like a windy road, right? Um, or transitions, you know, don't, don't be afraid of that. Um, mm -hmm. 
it may act actually end up serving as your true purpose, right, in the end. Yes, I can see that. I, I myself have have <laughs> driven down the windy road the before. Windy road. <laughs> and, yes. and I find one might feel guilty for going down that road, but I, I really find value in it. It's right. Thing. Yeah. I can sense that. Yes, for sure. Okay. Well, we really appreciate you answering the questions that we had for you. Um, if there's anything that the audience has, um, please be sure to either you can take a photo of the QR code that's here, which will automatically take you to the URL that you see on the screen. Um, and we welcome any and all questions. Uh, if there are a few questions that we find, we will collect them toward the middle of March, up until the middle of March. And then if we have a good amount of questions, we will come back and record a part two to this presentation with Dr. Stacy Kuhnhau, and we will address all of the questions that, that are asked. Um, but we really appreciate you taking time to come to this event. Um, I, I missed on introducing myself at the beginning, but my name is Jessica Lopez, as you, as you mentioned. Um, and I work here in the math department, and we usually host this uh, STEM lecture series to bring professionals like yourself to the students so that you can share your journeys because those journeys are very important as the students are going through their journeys themselves. Yes. Um, so we really appreciate you taking the time today to come and talk to us. Um, we do have a, a gift for you, but I will have to meet with you in person <laughs> to, to get that to you. But we definitely appreciate your um, support for this event and your time for sure. Thank you very much. I, I've had a great time. Thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.